Hi everyone, welcome to Orals Preparation for Ships Master Candidates Part 2. I hope you've watched Part 1 of this series, otherwise you can find the link to that video in the description section below. Today in Part 2, I'll take up a set of another 5 or 6 questions and discuss them so that you are prepared to answer similar questions in your oral examination. Let's get started. So in today's video, the first question is that you are alongside working cargo in a port and you have been informed that a tropical revolving storm, a TRS or a hurricane is imminent. That means that it is going to hit the port. There is no option. You, are, you know for sure that it is going to hit the port or pass through the port. Now, as a master, what are the options available to you? So, how would you answer this question? Now, in any vessel in port, in the direct path of a tropical revolving storm, you will have some limited options and each options would depend on the circumstances that are affecting the immediate area. However, there are certain things that you will definitely do before we discuss the options. So firstly, of course, is you should have been monitoring the track of the TRS. So the TRS just did not come out of nowhere. It must have been there in the vicinity and you as the master, you should have been tracking it. If not, then you start monitoring the track of the TRS. What was the past path? What is the predicted path? Once it hits the port or it passes through the port, will it die down? Will it pass through the port and still continue to evolve? So you have to definitely monitor the weather, the track of the TRS. Now, because you are working cargo in port, you must immediately stop all cargo operations. You must close up all the hatches if you are in a dry cargo vessel and start re-securing the cargo lashings. So let's say if you have containers on deck, then you must start checking the lashings of the containers. You must check the lashings of all the loose gear that is there on the ship's deck, depending on the kind of vessel you are on. Of course, I cannot cover all the vessels, but make sure that whatever loose gear you have on the vessel, whether it is a uh, lashing gears, whether it's live boats, live rafts, accommodation ladders, pilot ladders, make sure that you adequately secure them. And if you cannot secure them, then you must bring it inside a store or the accommodation. All right, then make sure you ask the chief officer to check the vessel's GM. All right, that is the stability indicator, the vertical distance between center of gravity and the meta center and ensure that you have removed all free surface. So the tanks should either be completely full or completely empty. This is because if you do proceed to sea then because of those slack tanks, you should not have any free surface effect that due to the vessels rolling or pitching may reduce your GM further and put your vessel in a precarious situation. Inform the engine room because the engineers may not know about the TRS. So make sure you inform the engine room, you inform all staff and ask them to start securing the loose material or loose gear in their department. So you also inform the galley staff the cooking, the catering staff, tell them to secure everything in the galley because some of them could be fire hazards or injury hazards because they have knives, sharp objects. You tell the same thing to the engineers to make sure that they are prepared. Also, put the engines on standby. Although you are in port, ask them to get the engines ready. And now as the master, you have to decide whether you want to stay in port or you want to proceed to sea. So let's see what are the couple of options available to you as a master. Option number one, you can either proceed to sea or to a nearby anchorage of the port. But you have to consider, there are certain factors that you have to consider before you decide to do so. Firstly, you have to decide or you have to monitor the speed and the track of the tropical revolving storm. So if you have decided to proceed to sea, is it possible that you will run into the tropical revolving storm? or the tropical revolving storm may catch up to your vessel or the impact of its strong winds and waves is so high 
that your vessel may be um, uh, stuck in highly rough seas and bad weather which may damage the vessel which may even you know damage or sink the vessel lead to loss of cargo pollution driven uh, pollution so these are the things you have to consider whether the trs you will meet the trs whether you are going to meet it head on whether the trs will catch up to you so think about all that so you have to track the speed and track of the trs versus the speed and course of your own vessel now in if you go into the playlist for marine meteorology you will see i have made videos on how to avoid the trs at sea so please watch that video to get more information about it the other option that you have is that you can move the vessel to a shelter anchorage an anchorage which is near the port and which provides shelter to your vessel if it is of course available all right so all ports do not have such shelter anchorage some ports do many ports do so you have to find out whether you have that option so in case you have that option firstly make sure that uh, without any doubt let the moorings go and run for the open sea all right so the decision you have to make this very early you cannot spend a lot of time in deciding whether you want to proceed to sea stay at anchorage or stay at port make this decision quickly and start taking action that is very important so don't put it for too late otherwise you will be caught and uh, your vessel will not be safe so if you have decided to go to the shelter anchorage decide it quickly use both anchors drop the anchor so that your vessel is secure although it is a shelter anchorage maybe you are taking shelter from the strong winds and waves you still don't take any chances you drop both anchors you still keep your engines on standby in case that you feel that you may have to quickly uh you know pick up your anchors and uh, leave or proceed to open sea so make sure your engines are standby and operational and uh, of course you have to maintain the anchor watch at all times especially in respect of monitoring sea and weather conditions so although you are in a shelter anchorage you have taken shelter in a you know behind a sheltered land mass or something like that and uh, you feel that you will be protected from the strong winds and waves you still have to continue monitoring the weather conditions including the pressure the atmospheric pressure as well and if you feel that at any point of time your vessel may be dragging on to a dangers or it is not going to cope well you have to quickly pick up your anchors and move out to sea so what is the second option available to you the second option available to you is to remain alongside in port all right so then what would you do now this would not definitely be the first or even the second choice according to many masters and uh, it only happens if the engines are disabled maybe you know some maintenance work is carrying out and you have no other alternative this is according to many masters i do not agree i feel that it is up to you as the master uh, to decide what is the best for your vessel so in case you do decide to stay alongside in port make sure that although you are in port it may be considered a sheltered place make sure you maximize the number of moorings that are used to keep the ship alongside now you can see here in the on the screen normally the moorings used are depending on the ship size of course you have 5 to 7 mooring lines but when you are alongside in port during a trs or passing nearby you have to maximize use all your mooring ropes if possible use all of it do not underestimate the power of winds and waves generated by a tropical warming storm although you are in port all right so i have been in port many time during such cases and we have used up to 18 mooring ropes sometimes uh, to keep the vessel alongside all right so make sure you use all available means you don't want those mooring ropes to part and your vessel to be dragged down to the port or you know drag on to dangers of navigation cause damage to the port because that will bring more liability issues so even if you feel it's not necessary please do so all right you should also get tug assistance if available to keep the vessel alongside all right so if the port is offering tug assistance make sure you use it you can also lay out the anchors if required and you should do so then make sure that you ask the port authorities to move the shore cranes away from your ship do not have the shore cranes overhanging on your ship because the shore cranes may also fall on your ship and cause damage make sure nothing like that is around your ship try to take on maximum ballast at that point of time making the ship very heavy as heavy as possible so that it is not easily movable by strong winds and waves and of course keep your accommodations stored lift it up you don't have to provide access to anybody from the shore or you can have somebody at the gangway watch and lower it if required but keep it up secured store it 
and uh, that is what you will do keeping your crew on standby of course your crew should be on standby and of course also try to make sure your engines are operational and ready to go if asm repair work is carried out then of course let them know that they should get the engines ready as soon as possible because you never know what you will face when you will keep the ship alongside in port so that is the detailed answer of this question the next question is you are instructed to take over as master of a ship which has been laid up for some time let's say eight months all right what checks would you make on the camp compass so this is only pertaining to checks made on the compass nothing else so your answer should only be pertaining to the compass all right we are not asking you about anything else so make sure you do not forget that and start answering questions which are unrelated all right so your ship has been uh, you know laid up maybe it was in dry dock maybe it was being some some repairs was being carried out because of which eight months you were in uh, you are laid up so now what checks would you make specifically on the compass so you can start by saying that you would inspect the compass first uh, which includes in, in inspecting the binnacle of the compass the housing of the compass you will make sure you check for its overall condition you will also have the ship swung and corrected by a compass adjuster all right so of course uh, we have a basic knowledge of magnetic compass and magnetism but for the compass to be corrected you need a qualified compass adjuster maybe you as a master have been qualified to adjust the magnetic compass that's fine then you do it but you need a qualified compass adjuster to correct the compass it's also necessary to have the ship in an upright position to swing the compass or to swing the vessel with of course all its derricks cranes lifeboats accommodation ladders in your C going position they should all be stored upright and in the C going position then check the azimuth mirror for accuracy as well and correct the alignment of the level line to make sure that it is aligned with all your compasses now how to check azimuth mirror for accuracy i have a video on the azimuth mirror you can find it in the playlist of bridge equipment and also i will put it in the description section below please make sure you watch it to know how you can check for the accuracy of the azimuth mirror then if there is any friction on the bearing that should be noted and check for the compass ball is it free to move about without sticking anywhere can you freely move it around on its gimbals so make sure you check for that as well then check the or test the soft iron correctors test it for retained magnetism and any residual magnetism detected should be removed by any link purposes all movable equipment near the compass should be removed as well and swing must not take place with other vessels within a 3 to 4 cables of proximity so ideally you should be swinging the vessel around in open sea or in an anchorage where you have enough room available but sometimes because you see you are just moving out of a laid up period you may have to swing the vessel around uh, in constrained areas so if you have to do so then you do that but make sure that there are not any nearby vessels which also cause a danger to navigation now all right so when you are asked this question a follow up question has often be asked by the surveyor on let's see what is the question now because you keep mentioning about swinging the vessel you should expect that the surveyor will ask you when do you swing the vessel when else would you consider it necessary to swing the ship to correct the compass so of course one of the reasons is if you have been in laid up uh, and uh, you have been in repairs you have been in dry dock for a long time but when else to swing the ship so at that point of time you can say that you will sh- swing the ship when maybe after a collision or a grounding incident you have been carrying out major repairs in a dry dock and these major repairs have affected the vessel's permanent as well as soft iron or induced magnetism if there was a major fire on board a ship again there was lot of damage to the ship structure or the iron con- iron structure of the ship you will swing the vessel if you have been engaged on a long charter trading especially in high latitudes you will swing the ship 
if you are leaving the dock yard or the builder's yard as a new ship so if you are in uh, you know in charge as a master you are taking delivery of a brand new ship then of course it goes without saying that you will swing the ship around most likely at that point of time you will have a qualified compass adjuster with you who will correct the compass who will provide you with a deviation card to start off with and uh, that is the way to go if you are loading a very high capacity metallic cargo let's say you are loading iron fillings you know iron fillings is highly metallic cargo so then you swing the vessel around because that iron content the cargo content will affect the magnetism of your ship if you find that the compass errors have become excessively large for no apparent reason or the compass is becoming unreliable you cannot rely on the compass because of these weird readings the you know these numbers that you were not getting before of deviation or compass error is unusually high or low or you know something strange something that you have not observed then you swing the compass again if you feel that if any electrical or magnetic equipment has been added to or removed from the proximity of the magnetic compass because that electric and magnetic equipment was also having an influence on the magnetism of the magnetic compass so if you have removed it or you've added something close by make sure you swing the compass and you anyway swing the compass in a period of 2 years because you have to update your deviation card every 2 years so these are the different situations in which you swing the compass around so this is often been a follow up question of a surveyor especially when you mention about swinging the compass now the next question is that you are the master of a vessel of course inside the summer load line zone right and you have received a distress signal from a vessel who was in a who is in a uh, winter load line zone now the question to you is is it permitted to take the vessel into the winter zone although you are in a summer load line zone can you take the vessel into the winter zone especially knowing that your vessel will be overloaded right so you can see here that uh, if you have forgotten what your load lines looks like then you can see here that i have put the load line picture here so if you are already in summer zone and you are loading for summer zone and if you go to winter zone ideally you should be loaded up to the winter load line mark but if you are in summer zone and you have gone to help a vessel in distress and you have loaded up to summer load line then if you go into a winter zone your vessel is overloaded because ideally you should be loaded up to the letter w but you are loaded up to the letter s because you were in summer load line so would you take your vessel there or not what are you supposed to be doing so of course the answer is you would take the vessel yes you would take the vessel to the winter zone because you are responding to a distress situation where people's lives are at stake you know people's lives are at stake The, there is a pollution danger maybe the ship is sinking this this there is safety in life at stake so you would of course put priority on the safety of life so your vessel may enter the winter zone only for the purpose of responding to the distress situation so as soon as you finish or you are not required you will immediately leave that situation so once the distress situation is resolved it is anticipated that your vessel would take the shortest and the safest route to return back to the summer load line zone where your vessel will not be considered to be overloaded all right so you only go into the winter zone to provide assistance to rescue the vessel rescue the people of the vessel in distress but if the situation has been resolved either by you or by some other vessel or the rescue coordination center has told you you are not required then you immediately turn your vessel back to the summer load line zone all right because by law you should be in summer load line zone based on your load line marks however because you are answering an oral examination question without fail you must always mention about noting down the deviation of voyage in the log book you must make entries in the official log book in the deck log book uh, you must note down the events the detailed events from time Uh, you decided to change the voyage from the time you decided to you got you obtained or you received the distress signal uh, if any communication made with the company charter any kind of communication everything should be filed everything should be um, entered as evidence and as soon as you decided to resume your voyage come back to the safe uh, ship summer zone you must make entries there as well so the entire operation should be logged in the logbook no matter how 
trivial or how small the issue or matter was. A follow-up question to this would be, when would a master not have to respond to a distress signal? So then you can say that as a master, you don't have to respond to a distress signal if it is considered unreasonable or unnecessary to do so. So let's say you have received a distress signal from 600, 800 nautical miles. It will take you many days to reach there. Or maybe your ship's engines are not in a good condition and you have received it and you know that you will not be able to make 600, 800 miles quickly. Uh, so at that point of time, it's unnecessary, it's unreasonable. You cannot reach on time. So you have to let the rescue coordination center know. Or you can just say that it is unpractical for me to do so. Impractical, not unpractical, impractical for you to do so. You will also not respond to a distress signal if the distress vessel has sufficient vessels already requisitioned to assist and your vessel has been released from the obligation of attending by the RCC, the Rescue Coordination Center. So maybe that vessel is in distress, but it is in distress in a busy area where there's a lot of traffic. Ships which are nearer to it have already responded and you are further away from it or other ships will reach much before you then you don't have to go to it, all right? And then you should you should always be logging all this in the GMDSS logbook. That goes without saying, all right? Then also you will not proceed to it if that action would endanger the master of your master's own vessel or crew. So let's say your vessel is not equipped to deal with a distress or you are, uh, you know, then and you are taking that vessel and you are taking your vessel to help another vessel, that will put your own vessel in danger. So that would not be right. So you cannot, as a master, put your own vessel in danger, put your own ship's crew in danger. And if you can justify it, then you do not have to proceed to distress signal. And finally, when the distress has been cancelled by the distress party and the distress party no longer requires the attending vessels, then you don't have to proceed for the rescue as well. All right. So these are the situations under which you will not be proceeding to help or respond to a distress signal but make sure although i have not put it here on the screen make sure that you mention that you will be logging events anyway whether you decide to proceed or not proceed even if you have received a distress signal you will note down the details of the distress signal and also note down the reason for which you have not decided to proceed all right so if you have been instructed from the rcc then you note that as well keep a copy of that communication as well Whatever is the reason, you will note it down in the GMDSS logbook. Do not forget to mention about documentation, logging of events, all that. That goes without saying. All right, so I'll stop the video here. It's uh, long enough and I will come up soon with part three. I'm getting some good feedback from you guys. So I will continue with this series. But do let me know if you are not happy with this series and you want me to stop making videos on it. Thanks for watching, guys. All the best with your studies and bye for now.